Howdy, everybody. Welcome to another What's Up Wednesday. Holy cow, this is a big, big show, as they are every week. I'm so glad to see you. Thank you for joining. If you're first time here, welcome. My name is Scott. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Go Small, Live Large. What we do here on What's Up Wednesday is take your questions live and help you be a better RVer, whether you're no time, still researching, part-time taking cool trips, or even full-time traveling like me in my Winnebago Travado 59GL. This is kind of a special show. It's a little bit of a walk back to 42 years ago. Um, I do have some relevant van tips for you, though. If you ever want to visit Mount St. Helens, that's what that big mountain on the screen is, because um, Mount St. Helens erupted May 18, 1980. It was a Sunday morning, and um, I'm going to share some stories with you, and it's just a delight to have you here. I'm a little cheeky today. I'm actually in the uh, brew pub parking lot. I had to sample the merchandise, so um, I'm a little cheeky today, so I hope you're uh, belted in, and I just got a good crowd here um, already. Let me share with you what we're going to talk about today, and again, it's just a great uh, honor to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Let me zoom in for you. So Van Place, we're going to talk in about 10 minutes on um, uh, my story on remembering Mount St. Helens eruption in 1980, 42 years ago today. And more relevantly, uh, uh, relevantly for this crowd is travel tips if you go see Mount St. Helens. I highly recommend it. Um, we've got Libation Live um, at 35 after. And then 45 after, I have a Van Tip and then a Song of the Week. But it's really about all of your questions. So we want to be sure and get your questions in on the program tonight. Um, yeah, this is just a really big deal. Um, it's a huge anniversary in my life. I, I mean, I don't know, just because it was it was so so vivid to me. It happened 42 years ago. And um, I do have some very specific travel tips for you. And one of my best practices actually came from traveling to Mount St. Helens um, National Monument um, that I, I adhere to to this day, three and a half years later, uh, later in my van. Um, this is my van parked. Um, I was, I didn't know who this person was in their Heimer, clearly sniffing up on them and not very cool. I wouldn't do that today, but uh, my van was silver then. It's definitely not silver today. And um, it's just a delight to have you here. Let me zoom over here, see what's going on. Yeah, Libation Live. So Libation Live, again, we are coming at you from a, a little brewery, pub, brew pub, uh, pretty popular in the, um, in the Bourbon A. Bradley, Kankakee area. And uh, so we stay tuned for that. I'm really excited, but truly really about your questions. Let me zoom in here for you. So if you're kind of new to the program, again, welcome. Really appreciate that. Any of these topics, I am full on board for discussion and uh, even some that aren't. And, um, and we want to be sure and get your questions answered. Um, you might be wondering where I'm kind of up this off already, but where am I coming at you from? Uh, Bourbon, Illinois. So this is about an hour south of Chicago, uh, the loop in Chicago. Uh, there's three small towns, uh, Kankakee, Bradley, and Bourbon, Together they combine about 50,000 people. Uh, this is what it looks like. Let me zoom in here for you. And um, it's, uh, it's kind of more well-to-do of the three little villages. And it's been pretty cold, and all of a sudden it's going to warm up again. But look at the rest of the country, boys and girls. Look at Texas. Holy cow. They're approaching 100 degrees already. It's mid-May. Lord have mercy. Um, let me show you the gas prices. They are going crazy here in Illinois. Well, this area I'm in right now, it's literally gone up 50 cents in the last week. Um, right now it's about uh, 4 dollars a gallon. And if you look at the Red Fin, which is a real estate app, um, you can see the three villages, Bourbon A, Bradley, and Kankakee. Kankakee is the old historic district. It's kind of got run down a little bit. So you can buy a house there for 63 grand. But if you look at Bourbon A, everything is north of a quarter million, probably even a half million in some of the better places. All of that Nazarene University is a pretty big deal here in the um, in the Kankakee Bourbon A area. So that's kind of where I'm coming at you from. Where are you watching from, more importantly? And let's say some hi to some folks. We got a lot of folks in the house tonight already. Look at this, 52 people, four minutes in. This is so great. <laughs> Just, I am fired up. You know what I've learned is, What's Up Wednesday is my Friday night. Tomorrow, I am taking the day off for some bad behavior. I am telling you, I've been working constantly, and this is like my Friday night. And I'm so glad you're here. Where are you watching from? If we have a new country on the list, we are going to put that on... Uh, flag on the map for next week, but let's say some uh, say hello to some folks here. Just got some regulars. Um, Donna, she remembers the um, Donna's so cool. Uh, the um, the eruption. We're gonna talk about that tonight with, in, with some degree because uh, I'm I'm gonna share my story with you. Um, I was 15 years old. 
Um, Javier's in the house. Uh, good to see you, sir. Uh, how's my RV? My RV is fantastic. Never been better, really. Uh, 92,500 miles. Uh, watch for a tour coming up around that uh, mileage point. I'm very excited. Mason Mike's in the house. Uh, getting ready to go to Wilcox's. Swill up some wine. That's so great. I love that. Sharon's in the house. Ohio. Ron from New York. Ken from Go Gators, Gainesville, Florida. Love Gainesville. Um, this is interesting. Zanitz, Zanitz, I'm not sure how you say that, but Brian, hey, California, uh, Cupertino, California. Been there many times. I used to work for Apple. I worked for Apple for over 10 years uh, from 2003 to almost 2014. I got my crystal Apple. So Cupertino will always have a soft spot in my heart. Um, thank you for joining, sir. It may be a new name. Um, Janelle's here. She remembers that uh, morning vividly. Shook the house. I am certainly it did. It took the top of a mountain. Can you imagine? Um, here's uh, Rich. We saw them just a couple of uh, days ago last week in um, Rockford, Illinois, and uh, they went to uh, St. Helens. Yeah, so you can kind of chime in on the story, Rich. Um, it is a long way up the freeway, and it's up a mountain. You're climbing about almost, what, 6,000, 8,000 feet? So we got some tips for you there. Um, Steve's in the house from Louisville. Love Louisville. And uh, here's Discovery Couple in the house. This is great. Um, I saw a couple more here. Yes. Um, mothership, Forest City, Iowa. Trivia question for the, you, those that don't, that don't know. Uh, Forest City, why is that the mothership? Yeah, that's where Winnebago's headquartered. That's pretty cool. Um, hopefully you're getting your work, your van worked on, Gary. Oh my gosh, that's funny. Um, oh, no way. Dave's on Route 66 in Missouri. Oh, yes, Joplin. Uh, good job, sir. And Ken's in the house. Just a lot of folks. Here's Dave. Indianapolis, that's so great, great town. Um, you know what's great about Indianapolis? You guys have an old spaghetti factory. Very jealous. There is not one in Chicago. Uh, manager's favorite, clam sauce and mazitra. You know how hard it is to find mazitra cheese? I'm actually trying to replicate that recipe, and I cannot find mazitra cheese. Um, can't man do. Uh, oh, yeah, he's got his ash, uh, jar full of ash. Yeah, we're going to talk about this tonight. I'm really excited about it. It's, it's just one of those milestones in your life you just never forget. I don't, anyway. Uh, Tim's in the house. Uh, JK's in the house. We got a lot of folks here. So if you're new to the program, we just like to give a shout out to the regulars. And um, we welcome everybody to the show, whether you're first time or whatever. Um, so here's Donna. Uh, this might be a new name. I just remember reminiscing about that morning. Yeah, I got some 1980 uh, trivia for you. So wait, it's going to be really, really awesome. Um, yeah, it's been raining all day, um, Van Liberty here in the, the Bourbonnais, Kanky area. Look at this guy. He's got to be the happiest person in the, in the house tonight. Dale just took delivery of his 2022 Travato GL with a fourth battery. Good job, sir. Wow. <laughs> I'm so excited for you. I hope you're watching this from your driveway, from your GL. <sighs> I'm so excited for you. That's so great. Um, yeah, I'm a little fired up uh, this week, and I was fired up last week, too. I had a good leg day at the gym today. Oh, my God. Um, let's see. Oh, Zansu's got uh, 2020.5 uh, MPE. Fourth out. Brand, man, you have got a score there. Holy cow. If my van got run over by a train and I was not in it, that's exactly what I would go by. Uh, congratulations. You have a stellar machine, sir, and it's going to change your life. I am certain. Oh, my God. Um, I'm almost kind of slightly jealous, actually. Um, that is a beautiful rig. Congratulations. Uh, that is so great. Um, so let's take a couple questions here. And thank you for following, Javier, the question format, which is three stars followed by three question marks. And in just a couple minutes, we'll hit the um, topic of the night, which is Mount St. Helens. Um, so Javier wants to know, does your RV have a car stereo and can I see it? Um, you cannot see it because I'd have turned everything around and it would screw everything up. Um, the cab certainly has a car stereo in the cab as a chassis, as you would know. What I have is a, J a Jensen, Jensen stereo head right above me and uh, two not so awesome speakers and then a subwoofer um, that's underneath the wardrobe. So it does have a Bluetooth connected 12 volt stereo that I play music um, on daily basis and it has speakers outside which i love as well so if i don't need to run the inverter and um i don't want to suck up my wi-fi uh, through my jetpack i run that all the time and um i kind of wish winnebago would do um take go back to that and, and actually take it up a notch uh, they take the speakers off outside which is i think is a miss and they should have put speakers in the bedroom which i think is a miss but um i am big on music i have two apple uh, home pods 
what they're called, right? Home pods? Um, the big speakers they got, they discontinued. I'm not sure why they did that. And it fills this van full of music. I love music in my van. Rich wants to know, did I make, fix my AC? Yes. Um, it's a long story, but a uh, short answer, yes. To get it fixed, and I can't tell you what a joy it is to have functioning AC without catastrophic consequences. Um, long story, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I'm just super excited, right? Yeah, so great. All right, so let's talk about um, let's talk about this quick. This is a good question. I think you had emailed me or something like that. Uh, um, so Zantasu, uh, surprised to find the Volta system is not silent. It is is it possible to reduce inverter DC DC uh, transformer noise? So what you're talking about is so it's silent in the sense that there's no generator having to run to create electricity. So in that sense, it is silent. But there are two inverter mechanisms, components in the van. One is the um, DC to DC, which is a separate fan, and then the uh, inverter charger, which uh, converts, I guess, from 48 volt to 110 volt. Probably got that wrong, but uh, they do have fan noise that goes up and down based on the load on the machines. Um, As uh, mine was pretty noisy too, the DC to DC in particular. Um, So what I would recommend, if you find it to be terribly offensive or more than out of norm, I would hit your Winnebago dealer up, have them take a look at it. Maybe even give Volta a call. If you go to Volta, just Google search uh, Volta um, lithium Volta power systems. Um, It's Volta. I can't remember their exact address. They will, they have a tech support line. Um, What I've had recommended for some folks to do is actually record like on your phone, a little MP3 file and send that to Jason at tech support and see if it's something that's out of the norm. Um, it does make noise. Uh, I will be honest. I think they've they've iterated that over time now, and you probably won't see that um, as, as relevant or as um, prevalent um, uh, going forward. But good question. All right, let's get into. Oh my gosh, we still got my thing on the fly. I am all cheeky tonight. Uh, bear with me, folks. Uh, let's go there. Um, oh yeah, I'm supposed to tell you a few more things before we get there. Okay, we gotta hurry. Um, YouTube uh, video coming up this Friday, uh, this Sunday. Super excited. Uh, when I was at Winnebago Motorhomes in Rockford, Illinois, we uh, with Mick, my guy, uh, who's uh, who I bought my van from. We went through in quite detail a Solus 59P. It's a 19 foot Promaster. Slips sleeps five people. And I got to tell you, I'm kind of smitten with that rig, the PX in particular. This one's the P, so you don't want to miss that video. That's coming up this Sunday, so join me for the premiere for that. Hey, if you're having a good day like me, give me a thumb up. Sure, appreciate that. Um, let me tell you about this real quick, then we'll get into the, the uh, meat of the matter. We have a huge guest list, boys and girls. Let me zoom in here for you. And I am serious as a heart attack about this. Next week, we got Joe and, and uh, Kate Russo. They are my RV heroes. Please tell everybody in your world to join us next week. Uh, we want a huge crowd. Uh, they are my mentors, my heroes, and some of the coolest people. They're joining us on What's Up Wednesday next week, uh, which is great. On the 15th of June, we've got the KOA that's selling Dita lots. Uh, Trevor's coming on, so you don't want to miss that. Storyteller Overland. I talked to Andrew Cooley this week. He's a chief revenue officer for Storyteller. It's going to happen in July. We have July 27th tentatively pegged as the date. He's going to come on and um, he is really excited. We're going to do some teaching um, in particular uh, on a couple of topics. We're kind of nailing that down either on insulation, 4x4, Sprinter versus Trans. I mean, we've got a couple of things, but I'm super excited that they have agreed to um, be on the show. Oasis, we're, um, OAC, how do you say it? Is, um, we're probably expecting early July. Um, still working on that. And if this one, I'm in communication with these people to come join us on the show, uh, Harvest Hosts. We love Harvest Hosts here at Go Small, Live Large. Um, and we're going to skip all that. Oh, let me show you this real fast. This, uh, some of you were attending in this. So a van event, we had our roundup at Winnebago Motorhomes in Rockford. Last week, we just had a great time. Let me zoom in here. If you get some happy, happy uh, campers here. Um, just a great time. Such great fellowship. Um, just a lovely time. Uh, the Harvest Host site, Prairie Street Brewing Company is where we had dinner. Um, I camped out in their driveway. I don't know about you, but there's something about taking a picture of the van with a full moon over it. It just always gives, oops, gives me a smile. And um, that's what that is right there. Ooh, how are we doing so far? <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's dive into the meat of the matter tonight, and I am excited to talk about this because it was such an important day for me. Uh, I was 15 years old. 
uh, when Mount St. Helens erupted Sunday morning, May 1980. And um, I just want to tell you a little tiny bit about my story and then give you some really pertinent um, travel facts that you will not want to miss um, and some advice um, as we roll into this. So let me kind of roll forward here just a little bit. So we probably know the story, right? Mount St. Helens had been kind of a dormant volcano for uh, 150 years and that we kind of are aware of. Um, it didn't have a lava explosion like we see out of Hawaii. It kind of blew the side and the top of the mountain out. And it was, this is a much better, more dramatic picture that we're kind of familiar with with volcanoes. But it was, this is kind of looking north and the ash cloud is going east at this point. And um, this is what it looks like today. Pretty devastating. There's this beautiful was it spirit lake that was right at the base of the mountain. Like 60 people got killed, which is a lot of people, but you know, for a mountain blowing up, not that many people, I guess. Pretty rural. Um, and there's Mount St. Helens in relation to Seattle. And my story kind of begins because I was in Spokane, Washington, which is 400 miles away. Now, Yakima um, and Euphrates and some of those uh, towns in between, the Richland and Kennewick, they got buried uh, quite heavily in the ash cloud, but also went so f far up, it went around the globe uh, several times, if I remember right. And uh, just a little trivia thing here. See Moses Lake right in the middle there? That's where I was born, Moses Lake, Washington. But uh, Spokane is where I lived at the time. I was, a, I think, a freshman in high school. And um, I'll never forget this day because coming over the horizon was this cloud, and if you were in the cloud path, you'll never forget that day. It looked like the world was coming to an end. I was 15, so I'm like, well, that's cool. Mom and dad, of course, were freaking out. And the reason we were kind of out and about is because we were at Fort Fairchild Air Force Base. Now, back then, um, it was a big family event every year to go to what they called then Armed Forces Day. Um, this was a, um, a very, it was a strategic bomber base. B-52s were there. Now it's a KC, uh, geez, I don't know the number. Uh, it's a tanker base. They, you know, um, that's why it says Global Reach for America because they, they refuel planes in the air. That's what that base is for now. But back then it was a B-52 base, and that's where I fell in love with B-52s. And we were there for Armed Forces Day. And I am not kidding you. I remember this vividly. You could see this cloud coming. And when they realized what was happening, they evacuated the base uh, because they didn't want this ash getting into all the planes. And this is actually news photos I was able to scramble together um, to show this. And this is in 1980. So you look at these cars and these are just, it's kind of funny. It's that old pickup truck next to that very modern looking airplane. And I'll never forget the stampede to get out of the Air Force base and again, this is a news photo. This looks like an old Chevy Nova or something, right? And it just started blanketing the Spokane area with about a little bit less than a half inch of this gray ash. And I'll never forget that we managed to get off the base and into downtown Spokane and just up to our house on the on the the, the south side, I think, the South Hill. That's what we called it. And um, it's maybe a 30 minute drive. And by the time we got um, out of the base and into downtown, the cloud had overrun Spokane and it was raining this super fine gray dust. It was like talcum powder and it was gritty, but it was super fine and it smelled like sulfur. It was hot and it was the creepiest feeling. Um, Mom and dad really didn't know what to do. So they pulled into a pizza hut as we were going to turn up and go up the hill to our house. And they thought it would kind of, you know, overrun, the cloud would overrun Spokane. It would be like a, like a thunderstorm uh, storm cell. The thing was like hundreds of miles wide, long, deep. It was, and they finally decided, uh, the, the rest was like, we got to get out of here. We have no idea what's going to go on. Um, power could fail, blah, blah, blah. So we, um, we got off and uh, we took off and it was dark because of the cloud. It was, uh, I'll just never, dad didn't know what to do. Blinkers were on, lights were on. And uh, I'll just, we, us kids in the backseat were having a grand time. This was very cool. But I'm sure mom and dad were scared out of their uh, minds. And we finally did get home. And what the deal was is that it just, it just rained ash. And this is kind of a, an example of what it looked like probably the next morning. 
Um, I'll just never forget the darkness, the smell, the silence, because all this stuff, it just absorbed. You could yell. Actually, we played it across the street. We yelled, and you could almost couldn't hear you across the street. There was just so much stuff in the air, like a snowstorm. If you've ever been in a snowstorm, it's a very similar uh, scenario. And the next day, we got, you know, there's no school for a couple of days. And then we spent the next couple of days playing the ash. You know, we hosed it down. We shoveled it. We had ash balls. And it was the craziest time. And I'll just never forget that day. And then 40 years later, I went to go visit the site. Thank you, Winnebago Travado. And traveling in a van uh, was always on my bucket list. Never did it. It took 40 years in a van to get there. And here I am in my cheeky hat. (laughs) I still love that hat. Don't have it anymore. Um, This is what it looked like that day I was there uh, in September of... of, um, Huh, two years ago, 19, I guess, 20, 19, I think it was September 19. Um, and the devastation is still real, but it's, it's just amazing to me the impact of nature, the destructive force of nature and the regenerative na- uh, force of nature. And it just is the craziest thing. Um, I'll just never forget that. Here I am. My van was silver then. I had my two bikes. Those were long gone. And... Um, Here's a couple of travel tips for you, and we'll do a little uh, 1980s trivia. So for those of you that have been there, if you've been there before, let me know. I would love to know that. And if you haven't and it's on your bucket list, you really need to go see it. It's kind of a special place on Earth. The um, What I would caution you on, and let me zoom in here for you, is what I was doing. I was coming out of the Castle Rock area, which is down by the Interstate 5. And it's a pretty steep climb. See those clouds there? In the middle of the picture, the, the entire travel time up until about literally the last 15 minutes was just socked in with fog. And I was so disappointed. I was going to make this drive, get up there, and there was no way to see the mountain, which is kind of the whole point. So I I would check the weather, number one, and um, have kind of proper expectations because um, when I got up there, it was like, it was like a van life miracle, which happens to me on a regular basis. And I'm like, I couldn't believe it. I got out of this fog. Couldn't see anything in front of you. And then all of a sudden you get up this little precipice and then there's the mountain. It was just, it was magic. You know, thank you God for just <laughs> providing for me for that one day. But here's my travel tips for you. Um, let me zoom in here for you. So uh, there's a little tiny town called Castle Rock. It's a charming logging town. You can absolutely stay the night. There is a KOA campground just a few miles from Castle Rock. And a good, I don't know, it's probably, Rich, what you said you were there. It probably takes at least, um, I don't know, a half hour, even an hour to get to the top of the mountain. Be prepared for foggy and cloudy conditions. There's at least two, I'm even thinking three um, National Park Service visitor centers along the way. Plan for an all-day event. And when you get back, go hit the cross-cut tap room in Castle Rock. It is just the coolest and still there. I just looked on the website uh, today make sure they're still there. They are still going. And here's my huge tip. And this tip I actually adhere to today, and that's the last item on the list. Um, there is literally one gas station when you leave town, and then there's one more just at, I think it's the first uh, visitor center, and then there is no other gas station. And I thought to myself, as I passed that gas station, I better fill up. I was about a half a tank. And it's, I should have actually measured the, the distance. I'm going to guess it's 100 miles up a mountain. And I would have been no way to go up, turn around, come back on a half a tank of gas. I would have been stranded, boys and girls. So that's why I in, invented the half tank rule. That if I'm in an unknown area and I have a half tank of water or a half tank of gasoline, I fill up so I'm never stranded without water or gasoline. And that's probably my biggest tip for you uh, out of this whole event is um, is fill up if you are in unknown territory, not sure the distance, not sure the gas station services, is to fill up at a half tank of water or um, uh, fuel for sure. All right, you ready for some uh, uh, trivia? I'm going fast. I apologize. Uh, I guess see some questions come in here. But we just got to talk about some, some trivia. Hopefully you found that useful. So 1980s, you ready for this? That's a long way back, boys and girls. Want to guess what the number one song was uh, in 1980, about that time frame in May? Keep on loving you by 
REO Speedwagon. Number three song, Pink Floyd, Another Brick in the Wall. How about this? We just kind of passed this uh, milestone uh, last Friday, the 13th. Friday the 13th was the biggest movie, box office hit, over $2 million, uh, May 14, 1980. Friday the 13th. If you haven't seen that first one, um, you can rent for like four bucks off of um, uh, Apple TV. And I just watched it and it's pretty cheeky. <laughs> but that was the big D. Sports fans, who won the Super Bowl 1980? Anybody know? Pittsburgh Steelers, they defeated the Rams 31 to 9. Oh my gosh. Okay, relevant topic gasoline. You ready for this? Gasoline in 1980 was pretty expensive. It was $1.25. They had a big, because uh, some of the Argo uh, oil embargo stuff was still going on. Um, I asked Siri the inflation adjusted price today um, $3.28, which is a bargain in 2022. I mean, look at that. I'm like, oh my God. Um, President Carter was being challenged by Ronald Reagan, who launched his campaign in November 1975, uh, 1979. And I was a freshman in high school. Uh, not even have a driver's license yet. Um, so that's the deal. May 1980, uh, Mount St. Helens erupted. Go see it. It's um, it's one of the greatest things. I, I think one of the, uh, maybe because, you know, the milestone in my life. So, um, all right, let's look at some um, questions here. Is um, coming at you fast tonight, ladies and gentlemen. So I appreciate that. Um, let's see, where do we stop off at here? Uh, yeah, so Steve says uh, they call it Skyfest now. Whoops, um, which is kind of funny. Um, I like Armed Forces Day. It just feels like uh, Skyfest seems like there should be a hundred balloons. I don't know. Um, oh, interesting. Um, I was working the radio station. Donna was the EBS system. Remember those? This is not a test. <laughs> yeah, um, it was really, really interesting uh, back then. So let's see. Um, just some questions, and we'll get into a couple more topics. We've got Libation Live in 10 minutes. So excited about that. Um, Javier wants to know, remember the smoke alarm in your RV going off where uh, where you did uh, buy the new one? Because I have a home smoke alarm in my RV. Um, yes, I do remember that. Apparently, there's like RV versions. Um, mine's working fine, as expected. Um, so I, yeah, mine got... And messed up and I replaced it very easily and uh, uh, so but I was kind of scolded by a number of folks that there's a special RV style and there probably is for vibrations what have you but uh, um, see Van Liberty do you have the iPod Pros just bought the Costco noise cancel- cancellation is epic frequent super loud data centers uh, I do use the, I, um, the AirPod Pros, yes, they're very great. Um, I, weirdly, I, unless I'm on an airplane or someplace really noisy, I like the transparency so I know what's going on around me. I like my keep my windows open in my van. I like to see what's going on around me. Um, uh, yeah, I'm super excited for the Russos. Please tell everybody to join us. Um, they were just my heroes, and you're going to hear about next week. We're in communication with them right now, and uh, they changed my life. They literally changed my life. Um, I will be forever beholden to them. Tim wants to know, what are your thoughts, Scott, on Road Trek Zion? The stainless steel backsplash, these you seem to be a great idea. Nobody but them does this. It is kind of a signature trademark for them. Um, I think it's pretty cool. I kind of wish mine had it. Um, I think they're a great, great van. Um, they tend to be dark. They have a lot of dark interior colors. Uh, that would be my only real negative I had to say about them. I'm glad they're back on the market. Um, competition is good. I think the stainless steel is pretty awesome. I uh, wish mine had it to some degree. Um, I know some of you have actually put stainless steel um, or brushed aluminum at least in your kitchen to make it look cool. Um, so, yeah, I, I would um, give them a thorough look. Uh, they come in a lot of different varieties. We've got lithium packages, pop tops, uh, the real deal. So, uh that's so great. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Janelle saying uh, she lived in Everett, which is north of Seattle. She was 20. Uh, we got there after the Ashburn around the world. Yeah, it was just a day you'll never for. I mean, if you're in the Washington state area, for sure, you'll never, you'll never um, 
never forget that. And we had a, a there was a female governor. Um, somebody help me out there. Um, Dixie Dixie Ray, wasn't that? Wasn't her name? And uh, uh, it was chaos. It was just chaos because nobody knew, right? Um, they'd be kind of expecting it weirdly, but uh, nobody really knew what to do. Yeah, Tim Sanders, remember that? I was staying in college, the, the, the eruption in college. And he's 60, that's cool. Um, yeah, Stephen saying, only tankers at the base today used to have B-52s. Uh, that's where I fell in love with the B-52, is I remember just those things taking off. It was a big part of Armed Forces Day. Now they have the Angels, that's kind of the usual thing. Uh, but even um, the, the tankers are really amazing to see. Um, Bispo's like, boom. Um, you got just in Illinois, really? Holy cow. Yeah, it was a pretty big deal. Um, Javier's from uh, Memphis. Good to see you, sir. Let's see. Looking for a couple questions. Uh, let's see. Drove to the top on a motorcycle uh, during the rain. It was fogging the way. Couldn't see anything. Yeah, it's kind of a crapshoot. I, I, I was a, a van life miracle. I mean, I was so bummed because the more I drove, the thicker the fog got. Then all of a sudden, you popped up on top, and it was like the, you came out of the cloud bank. And um, so I, I would check the weather. You know, camp out in Castle Rock. There's a lot to do around that little area. Uh, it's a cute little downtown, um, and they just kind of you know see what the weather looks like. Um, probably um, guessing summer. You know, if you're in the if you're familiar with the Pacific Northwest, there's kind of gray and grayer. Then you get like eight weeks of sun, August and September, and um, you know Oregon, the Portland area, and Seattle, Bellingham, all the way up to uh, Vancouver, BC. Um, it's just gray and grayer. Then you get eight weeks of sun. And if you visit during August and September, you're like, this is the most amazing place ever on earth. And it is for 60 days. <laughs> then it's like gray and drizzle. Um, so, yeah, it was really fascinating. Thank you, Donna. I took my sons up to Mount St. Helens in, in 1997. So interesting to see how it started to grow back after such devastation. And, you know, that's the miracle of nature that I find in my van as I roam around. Even just coming out of winter and seeing everything come back to life. Um, after so much devastation, you know, there, the, the need to live is so vivid. People, plants, birds, bees, bears. Um, it's just, it's just the, the, you know, the innate sense of nature. Um, everybody wants to get, gets to heaven. Everybody wants to get to heaven, but nobody's in a hurry to get there. Everybody wants to live. Even the Pope, he's like taking his time. Um, yeah, we're just saying at least 45 minutes to the observation center. Um, and it's a drive, boys and girls. It's up a mountain. So be prepared. Again, gasoline, half tank rule. Uh, very, very important. I totally would have got stranded. I'm so glad I learned. Uh, yes, Paige, uh, smart tip about half tank of gas. And I'm serious as a heart attack. Unless I'm in an urban area, and if I'm going, going on, you know, traveling and I have no really idea, I fill that tank at a half um, water too, if I have it available. Uh, number one song in 1980 was Billy Jean by Michael Jackson. Ooh, nice job, sir. Uh, that's a great, still a great song, right? Um, okay, let's talk about, let's see, libation like coming up and uh, high school graduation, 1980. Woohoo! I did 1983. Lewis and Clark Tiger, Spokane, Washington. Wow. We're on the same age group. I just love it. Um, yeah, so here's Teresa. First go, Teresa. Um, it's uh, having never to go below half tank. And at a benefit is not getting sticker shot a sticker shock at the gas station. Yeah. It's got a 50 cents here in this little town in the last week. It's just this kill board or killing me. Billboard ratings. Thank you, Mike. Um, <laughs> Friday the 13th was a gentle, wholesome type movie about jaded love. Um, if you want to get a chuckle, it's so true. If you want to chuckle, go watch that movie. Um, Kevin Bacon was, I don't know, about 12 then. And he was the first one to get bumped off. Uh, which kind of surprised me, and um, and it kind of set the tone for horror movies going forward. I would say um, it's still a pretty creepy movie. It's a little little cheesy today, but um, Kevin Bacon, um, yeah, five bucks where Dave is at. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is cool. So uh, Jane says made the trip 25 years ago. Mount St. Helens, highly recommend it. Five year old daughter asked if we could. Should be there after seeing the uh, Johnson Ridge Visitor Center movie. Um, very cool. Uh, Tin Can Carl. Oh, so uh, um, I always have a tablecloth. 
and I put it out when I'm staying for a few, um, more than a day or two. Um, what Tin Can Carl's referring to is he was a little horrified that I had my gear spread out on a, on a picnic table without protective covering. That'd be, a, I guess, a picnic table condom. Um, what I did is I wiped it down really good with um, a bunch of Clorox wipes, um, to get mostly the bird poop off. Um, there was no sewer even nearby that picnic table, sir. So I get your point. And um, I did actually buy a new picnic table because they do kind of break down over time. And um, so, yes, thank you for nudging me on that. I appreciate that. Uh, very good. All right, let's switch gears. Let me see. How am I doing? Oh, my, I am so behind on this. Um, here we got stickers. Oh, by the way, um, if you are... Um, I've been posting some fun things. I need to do my sign of the day on Instagram. Um, you'll want to follow me on Instagram. We've been putting out some fun content there, uh, including my um, chicken and dumplings dinner last night. So you don't want to miss that. Um, and here's uh, we'll do more questions in a second. That's <laughs> good. A fun. It's Friday night for me, and I am taking. There's a great um, uh, country western song. Uh, taking the day off for um, bad behavior. That's what I'm doing tonight after this. So I'm actually literally in the parking lot of this place right now. Uh, this is Brickstone Brewery. And let me zoom in here for you. And I'm going to pop the top in a second. So please get your libation out. And where this comes from, let me zoom back in here for you, is um, taking a little nod off of uh, Traveling Robert. He does a lot of, uh, he loves IPA beers. And as I roam around, I taste food, I drink you know, wine, beer, distillery, spirits. And um, I just thought it'd be fun to share those with you, um, to either nudge you to experiment, right? That's what travel's about. It's just experimentation and tasting the local tastes. So um, this is kind of what their um, their cellar or their store looks like inside their restaurants, their restaurant pub. Um, this is the bar I'm sitting at. They got lots of uh, stuff on tap. And this is what we decided to buy tonight. So what we're looking at here is McCormick Place typo. Um, what's interesting is that this was um, developed specifically for the Chicago Auto Show, which runs early in, I think, um, late January, early February every year. McCormick Place is this huge cavernous convention center in Chicago, and uh, they made a beer special for this. They serve it every year, apparently. And um, let me zoom back in here so you can see what the, this is all about. So it's a pale ale style, 5.2% ABV alcohol by volume, uh, 30 on the uh, International Bitter Units, 10 bucks for a six pack, and you can get it online. I'm told uh, the, the bartenderess was pretty sure that you could send them an email and they would send it to you. Um, but you can definitely go there and get a bunch of swag. So here's what I like about it. It's got a super awesome label. See that? And the can is black. When's the last time you saw a black beer can? I can't remember. Um, so let's pop a top. And we'll pour it in the Lukenbach Texas glass. So it's pretty light, right? I like light. I like two kinds of beer. Pilsner or lager or port, uh, porter and stout. Mm. Cheers, boys and girls. Thank you for joining me. What's up Wednesday? May 1980. Changed a lot of people's world. This is delightful. It does have a little bitter, a little citrus. Um, Better in my Lucan glass for sure. Um, but uh, what kind of beer do you like? I'm curious about that. Nothing like drinking the beer from the place in their parking lot, right? <laughs> so funny. Mm. Um, so Steve's like saying, uh, waiting for the keg of booze on the roof, Scott. I got my liquor cabinet. I've got room for a keg. I don't get my roof anymore. Um, so Bispo's got a question here. Um, is a bathroom really necessary? Do you like the Solus Pocket? Uh, yes, I really like the Solus Pocket. I like the Solus Pocket a lot. There's a lot going on in that little tiny van. Um, it's on the ProMaster 1500. I spent some time uh, when I was at Winnebago Motorhomes, my home dealer in Rockford, Illinois. We did the um, Solus uh, P, which you'll see this Sunday. We did the Solus Pocket, which you'll see in a couple weeks. And I did the Scott Score on the 59 px solace and i was shocked at how well it came out on my uh on my criteria the pocket's cool for me you know the bathroom for me is what this is all about which is what this is right here <laughs> the bathroom uh, to me that is probably it's a it's a top three thing table 
bed, toilet. And that's it for me. So I would not buy Soul Pockets specifically because of that porta potty. Um, but um, for me, it's really necessary. I'm a full time traveler. I'm not going out for a you know weekend at the at the lake to go fishing. Um, so for me, it's very important. But it is a super compelling van. I really really do love it. Um, Javier's got a question here, and um, Javier wants to know when you turn on the light, does it drain the main main battery or the battery for the lights? Um, I assume you're talking about the coach, not the chassis battery. When you turn on the light, does it drain the main battery or the battery for the light? So, like right now, uh, this program is being powered by Volta. It's a ginormous lithium energy system. I got 8,600 watts of juice running the air conditioner and all the lights. Chassis turned off. Um, I can turn the inverter on, like it is now, to run all those appliances. Or I can turn it off and then it goes into 12-volt mode. Javier, in which case it just sips juice, um, sips juice. And I, if I'm not moving, inverter off, uh, I got a pretty full battery charge. I can go sitting still for three to five days. And if I'm running the inverter, it depends if I run the AC or not, um, anywhere from 24 hours to a little bit uh, less than that if I'm running the AC. So I'm not quite sure I understand your question there, but um, it does not pull. There's no connection between the Volta lithium system and the chassis battery. They're totally separate on purpose. And, um, well, look at this. I got my brother in the house. So hopefully that helps you, sir. I'm going to get this off the, line, off the thing because we're still on <laughs> patient life. My brother's in the house. Dude, thank you, Troy Watson, for joining us. Um, hey, he's saying bell bottom trousers, terry cloth pull over their shirts, feather style, living large in Spokane. Remember the, uh, remember that Pizza Hut, that Armed Forces Day, uh, Brother Troy? Oh, my God. I'll never forget that day. Um, so if I was 15, you were probably 13. My sister, our sister was probably, what, 10? nine even um just a crazy dixie Ray. that's right dixie lee ray thank you donna um was she a good governor i, I was too young to really know um i don't remember so joe wants to know joe thank you you may be a new name welcome sir thank you for joining us i saw the wingham wasey video from the tv show did you get to do the q a interview with them not yet on this show anyway uh, look for them, but couldn't find it. Uh, thanks for the great channel. Hey, you're welcome, man. Um, we've been in contact with them um, about every four weeks. Uh, July is looking what it's looking like. What the um, We were a little fast out of the gate, so they kind of introduced the rig in Tampa RV Super Show in January of this year. I got to them like a horny teenager, and they're like, uh, let's wait until we get a little more information. And um, so we're planning, probably July. Um and they have promised that they were going to announce a whole bunch of information on this program, What's Up Wednesday. And um, they're a great team, and they are so excited to get the, the, the news out. So bear with us. Stay tuned. Check with us every uh, What's Up Wednesday. And once they have dates, we'll put it all over our website. And they're going to put it over their, uh, all over their social media as well. Cheers. Um, and um, I, I can't wait. It's a really cool vehicle compelling for so many reasons and i'm sure that thing has been iterating uh, like crazy over time so thank you for asking joe so stay tuned uh walter does your k02 tires diminish your gas mileage from regular tires so he's talking about my um all-terrain bf goodrich i'm on my second pair um i would say it really diminishes gas mileage i haven't seen any change in gas mileage um they do get become more noisy as they wear um but I love these tires, and I would put them on again a third time. Um, they're kind of like summer tires on a sports car. They're they're grippy. They're they got a good bite, so they wear kind of easily. But um, I really haven't noticed the gas mileage. The gas mileage is going up a hill or wind um, or load in the van. But uh, I regularly get uh, 12 miles a gallon in the city um, and 15, 18 on the highway. I'm the slowest guy on the highway. I'm, I'm Truckers are passing me, man. Because I'm looking at that. I try to keep it about, you know, 2,000 RPMs. And even lock it in fifth gear just to kind of keep that constant speed. Because I'm trying to save gas mileage. Or, you know, just, you know, I'm not fast anymore. I used to drive a sports car. Not fast anymore. I mean, RV show. Um, okay, I'm for some comments or uh, questions here. Uh, let's see, where are we? 
can't believe my brother's in the house. That's so cool. Thanks for joining, dude. Um, so Javier's clarifying here. Chassis battery is the RAM battery. Coach or house is the only system you're be. Any house lights, any house lights are coach lights, not chassis. Um, hi, Deborah. Oh, she's explaining, oh, Deborah's explaining to Javier. Oh, there you go. Thank you for that. Um, I love how y'all talk amongst yourselves. I'm merely the sage on the stage, right? Uh, hey, Vancouver, BC. Ooh, we might can't put Canada on the on the on the map. In fact, I'll write that down. Canada. I do hope to get to Canada this year. Um, I'm in the upper Midwest for the next couple of months, and um, I would love to get to Canada. Well, you got to hear the mountain. That's extraordinary. That had to be something to really. 400 miles away, the, the sound wave probably dissipated, but I can believe it um, if you're in that area. Yeah, remember that, Kathy? Um, there's a huge, I mean, there are all these logs, right? It mowed down this forest. It clogged the, uh, what was the name of that river? Tuttle River or something like that? And um, I'm glad they kind of, they harvested some, clearly, uh, but there's still many of the logs sitting there. And you can just see where just the forest just, bloom over like snapped on my matchsticks it was really really pretty impressive um let's see mason mike let's see how we're doing on time uh we'll do our van tip here in just a minute mason mike wants to know are you still dealing with your sticks and bricks rental or is business done and you are full-blown pleasure travel mode now uh great question sir um i'll have more reporting on the next couple of weeks um we have shoots of green uh, ir uh, almost irrational exuberance, um, but I think we're coming to an end on this, and uh, I'm staying in the area to get a lot of work done. I am working over time to getting all kinds of stuff done. Um, uh, in fact, I canceled some, I was going to do some weekend trips. Um, that's why I'm taking tomorrow off for a bad behavior. Um, but um, stay tuned. Um, so much going on. I'm just so fired up. It's just, I, I can't believe. You know, it's really kind of amazing. For those of you that are retired, how long did it take you to get your feet under you to find your new weekly routine? And I ask that very seriously because I exited corporate America in September of last year. And this is now May. And with Route 66 and the Airbnb stand-up uh, we did for the last four months, uh, December through March, I finally feel like I'm finding my motion and I got to believe a retiree feels something similar. Now I'm self-employed entrepreneur. So if I'm not doing something, I ain't making any money. Nobody send me a check for looking good. Let me tell you. But today I've just discovered recently two big epiphanies. This feels like my Friday. Um, and I'm changing my vernacular from saying I live full time in a van. I mean, seriously, who wants to live in a van to full time traveler? That's why we buy vans. That's why we buy RVs. We do that to go travel. So you will hear me coming out of my mouth from now on. I'm a full-time traveler, not a full-time guy in a van. Um, so I had some really big epiphanies. Um, so much coming at you. Yeah, buckle up and um, hold on because it's going to be super exciting over the next few weeks. I'm literally delivering three videos plus what's up Wednesday through the end of July including van tours every Sunday. So I am pumping it for y'all and me too. Thanks for asking. Let's see. Uh, Captain Andrews, what's that? I remember our high school shop teacher lived out of a brown Dodge conversion van that had been turned into a camera under the window. Everyone thought he was weird. He was really ahead of his time though, right? Anybody the VW Vanekin? Oh my gosh, right? Um, Larry's got a question here. Do you flush your Travada water system with bleach every 12 months? Uh, no. Um, I should do this. You know, three and a half years of owning the van, I I have never disinfected my system. That will gross out many of you. But here's why. I empty my tank about every three days. I mean, down to E, and I fill it back up. So there is a constant motion of uh, fill, empty, running it through the system. Um, it'd be like... You know, do you disinfect your house water system? Why not? Because it's always in motion. It's got chlorinated water in it. It's pretty clean. Uh, my water does not sit. Um, so no, I have not done this in the three and a half years of ownership. Um, maybe I should. 
I drink the water from the tap too, so I I, I don't know. Um, all right, so let's talk about Van Tip. How are we doing on time? I'm always behind. All right, let me roll forward here. Give me a uh, Miss Mike. I see your question. So Van Tip, um, this is kind of a good Van Tip. You know, I am I'm a full-time traveler in a van, so I'm slow out of the gate sometimes. Here's my tip for you. Are you ready for this? Let me zoom in here for you. All of our vans have a ceiling fan. Maybe your house does too. But what I discovered was the fan is in the middle of the van, which isn't too bad if you're up running around. But guess where I am when I want to do something with the van? Well, I'm in bed, typically. And what I used to do is mount my fan remote where the crucifix uh, is here. So I'd literally have to get out of bed to grab the remote to adjust the fan. And I'm like, ridiculous. I never even used it because I had to get out of bed. I might as well just go hit the, the button, right? Um, I had an epiphany. We had a lot of epiphanies lately. So it's kind of hard to see here, but what the arrow is pointing at, I'll zoom in here for you, is the remote holder that used to be screwed next to the uh, microwave is now under the cabinet and I lay in bed and I look at the remote. And if you haven't done this, please consider this. There's, um, I'm laying in bed, looking at the remote holder and now the remote resides there. And let me tell you what a difference that is. I can now lay in bed and it sticks with a little bit of Velcro. And now I can adjust the remote from in, from bed. And I got to tell you, I know it's so simple, right? I even put my thermometer there. But it is just the most pleasant thing to push the remote and it works. And I don't have to get out of bed anymore. So if you haven't done that trick, um, give that some thought. Because it was a game changer. Because I'd always have to get out of bed and go hit the fan. Which kind of drove me crazy in the middle of the night. Or in the middle of the morning. And um, if you haven't tried that, give it a shot. Because I think you will find it to be much more pleasant. And what's been kind of fun is to um, watch the temperature... Uh, the thermometer uh, change. Um, uh, I have one in the front of the cab and the one um, in the back above the bed. And just to watch the temperature difference is really pretty dramatic. So um, so if you're kind of wondering what to do with your remote for your fan, um, give that a uh, consideration. I think you might find it kind of useful. How are we doing tonight? Oh, my God. So let's see. Uh, Mason Mike wants to know, um, whoops. Um, was the chicken and dumpling a dinner from your Cracker Barrel hack? Yes, sir. Um, I actually have a video coming up about that on Cracker Barrel in general, but, uh, it's, it's the best deal ever. Um, and that's exactly what I did. Uh, what I do is I, I order the chicken dumplings from a Cracker Barrel from overnighting. I want to support the business. Very, very important. And, um, and then I eat all the chicken and a few of the dumplings in the restaurant and I take everything back with me. And then I add rotisserie chicken to those, uh, dumpling leftovers. And I can get three chicken and dumpling dinners out of a single serving for seven bucks at a Cracker Barrel. So that's exactly what I did. Good job, sir. Uh, <laughs> cheers. You guys having fun? I'm a little juicy tonight. I apologize. Mm. We're having fun though. Um, ooh. Semantics radio. That sounds good. I love semantics. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, whoa. Let's see. Bob Scott. Hello. Okay. Hey, look at this. Coco Baby. Just bought a 2015 Trivado. Found your channel a month ago. Thanks for all the info. Wow, congratulations. Good job. That was an early model. I think that's about when they came out, wasn't it? Some of you Trivado folks will know for sure. Um, I think that was maybe even the first year. Um, was diesel available back then? I know diesel was available in some of those early ones. Um, uh, so, yeah, it's pretty cool. Let's see. Uh, got a couple more here. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Donna, 1970 Chevy van with waterbed. If this van's a rocket, don't come knocking. Can you imagine a waterbed in a van? Are you serious? My mom and dad used to have a, a waterbed, actually. Um, I don't know how anybody could sleep on that. That would be a, a recipe for getting a boat lifestyle, for sure. Um, uh... And Walter is saying here, congratulations on leaving the corporate world and being a full-time traveler. Yeah, you know, it's just it's just the most amazing thing. Um, I pinch myself, and you all are so important to be part of that journey. 
And the reason I do it, really, I'm working harder than ever, but I've never been so fulfilled, never been so tired, but never been so energized. And uh, there's just something about being under one's own sail and creating things that help other people come to the realization, like Dave, as of tonight, I'm a full-time traveler. Congratulations, sir. Is that the coolest thing? There's just so much to see and do. I just, I get itchy if I am in the same place for five days, let alone five minutes <laughs> sometimes. And five months, I just can't imagine. Um, so yeah, just congratulations. That's so, so exciting. I'm uh, just, just so happy for you. Um, okay, a few more minutes. Let me talk about song of the week. Uh, how are we doing over here? Let's see. Yes. Um, congratulations, Dave. That is so great. So proud of you, sir. Um, so song, I should have put a CD in here. Are CDs coming out in 1980? Not quite yet, right? Photographs are still the big thing. Now, I should have been, you know, Billie Jean or, or um, Brick in the Wall. But this is a song I came across um, recently. And if you like Waylon Jennings, who's an old 70s guy, right? Uh, country rock. Um, hit this song up. Um, let me zoom in here for you. Whitey Morgan and the 78s is the name of the band. Bad News is the name of the song. And I discovered this because of the Yellowstone uh, TV show soundtrack. And I am, this guy sounds like Waylon Jennings. And it's got a really good beat to it. It makes your foot tap. And it's kind of a cool song. Um, If you're not familiar with this, uh, dial up your music source and type in Bad News by Whitey Morgan and see what you think of it. I was pretty impressed by the song. I can't get it out of my head. Um, that's why I love doing this show because I find stuff I would never kind of discover to help share with you guys So and gals. And uh, so hit that up. Let's see what else we got going on here. Let me look off to the side. Uh, yeah, okay. So um, there we go there. So Van Liebers is like, I never apologize for having fun. Yeah. You know, Traveling Robert, I would love to, I've met him in, in person. Everybody, you guys follow his channel? Um, he gets two, 300 people. He's even done his his uh, YouTube lives from, from a bar. Uh, I'm a little jealous. I need to take it up again, clearly. I'm sitting in the parking lot, but you need to have a little advanced planning. But I just love the way he rolls. Uh, he is an inspiration to me. He's got a very different rig, but um, he truly is an inspiration to me. Like the Russo's on next week. You know, it's just, uh, it's so amazing. Um, Mason Mike has a question. Where do you get your van thermometer? I want to buy two for my van. Do you have it on your um, shop link on the website? No, actually, I found those at Camping World. Um, you could probably go down a Walmart aisle and find something similar. They've really done very well for me. They were not super expensive. I remember like 20 bucks. You get, I don't even know. I can't remember. I found them at Camping World. And Lacrosse, I think, is the brand. And they are mounted via mounting putty tape. And I keep moving around because I'm looking for the most accurate place. But I cannot tell you what a difference it makes, the temperature of the back of the van versus the front of the van. I have it mounted right over my, um, right here, uh, right there, um, depending on where the cab is or the back of the van is in the sun and the position of the air conditioner. So I think it's just, it's fascinating to watch how the temperature inside the van vacillates within literally six feet. It's just the craziest thing. That's so great. Oh, Javier wants to say, uh, can you say happy birthday to my dog, Goat, and Turbo, and can I have a shout out? Um, happy birthday to your dog, Goat. That's your dog's name is Goat? <laughs> Does that dog have a complex or what? And Turbo, that's a good name for a dog. And have a shout out. Javier, thanks for joining us. Look, at you, I got SpongeBob. Who doesn't like SpongeBob? He's the coolest cat ever. Remember Ren Stimpy? Oh, my goodness. Ooh, Ren Stimpy. Let's have a chose to Ren Stimpy. Um, oh, this is cool. I appreciate this, Carl. Scott, you are to me what the Russo's are to you. You're my inspiration. Thank you, sir. Truly appreciate that. Um, and that's what we do. I'm simply standing on their shoulders, and they are standing on somebody else's shoulders. My granddad, Grandpa Watson, whose ashes are on the dashboard, it had a 1968, you know, 69 um, Volkswagen camper van. So we all, it's a it's a peak-to-peak principle. And I'm just honored that I am to you what the Russo's are to me because they forever changed my life. Who would have thought three and a half years ago to quit my you know six-figure corporate job to do this 
and I'm having more fun than ever at 57 years old in a couple months. I have never been more enthused, energetic, and I'm telling you, it's just the greatest thing. Travel is the great, what's the right word, equalizer to bring curiosity back to one's life. I truly believe that if somebody's kind of given up on life, they need to go travel. And if you travel in an RV, in a van in particular, I think, and for those of you that know this, that have your van, it just, the curiosity starts seeping out of you. Can't get enough of it, right? Um, and that's what uh, I find so, so valuable. So thank you, uh, Tin Can Carl. And thanks for pushing me on my, on my, on my tablecloth. It's so great. Um, uh, I appreciate that, Mason Mike. Yeah, that was, that was so great. Uh, you met me um, in Flagstaff. Great friendship was formed. And, and you're very busy on getting a Baja camp out put together, right, Mason Mike? <laughs> so great. All right, so what else we got here tonight? Uh, we're top of the hour. If you had a fun tonight, give us a thumb up. Sure do appreciate that. That's always great. Look at this cat. Got a ton of stuff coming at you. There's a video on Friday being posted um, on the candles, I think it is. No, it's on the service thing. So you guys saw that kind of on a What's Up Wednesday. We're cutting these out, reposting them. But Sunday, big video. So please join us for that. And for sure, next Wednesday, join us for What's Up Wednesday. We're the Russos. Joe and Kate, I'm, I'm hoping they're going to come. I don't want to bust the bubble. So, um Join us for that. It's going to be a really great show. My heroes forever. And, uh, of course, we want to just uh, say thank you for everything you do for me. And uh, it's just a, it's an honor to be part of your lives. Uh, and we looked at me. We are working on some roundups and lots of stuff coming. Um, and um, 1980, 42 years ago, Mount St. Helens blew up, changed lives forever. Milestone in my life. What milestones do you still have to put into your life? through a traveling in a van in particular? That's my question for you. So with that, we say cheers and good night. We'll see you next uh, Wednesday. What's up Wednesday? And thank you for being out there. Really appreciate it. See you soon.